What's up gamers, Dreamcast Guy here and it's Top 10 Thursday. Game development is a complicated road. The idea you have in your head at the start is rarely what you're playing at the end. Sometimes this means that a project that starts out on such a great plan can turn out disastrous. Or you can have the opposite effect. This week we're taking a special look at the games that sucked really badly during the design stages only to be saved at the last minute on my list of the top 10 games that almost ended up terrible. Number 10, Halo. This is Master Chief. He's seven feet tall, wears a full suit of powerful armor that protects him from nearly all damage, and has been training for combat since the age of nine. Using these talents, he's personally saved humanity in countless wars. Looking at this amazing gameplay, it's easy to understand why his franchise was such a huge success and helped sell millions of Xboxes. Funny enough, during early development, what this was actually going to be was a real-time strategy game similar to StarCraft. Our hero would be part of an army of cyborgs built to stop evil aliens. While this is an interesting idea, I'm much happier with the epic space adventure we got instead. Number 9. Conker's Bad Fur Day it's not often that you can see a title filled with adult humor on a Nintendo console, but one exception to the rule is definitely Conquer. Originally, this was going to follow our fluffy pal exploring the land with his girlfriend Barry, but during the prototype testing phases, something strange happened. Even though the gameplay worked well, all the people they hired to try this build of the game said that the cuteness made it feel boring. The studio decided to completely overhaul the project and call it Bad Fur Day, putting in giant poop monsters, cussing scarecrows, and even a dance club where you can get super drunk. Because of these changes, many people consider this the most entertaining Nintendo 64 experience and are still begging for a sequel 15 years later. Number 8. Batman Arkham Asylum The Dark Knight has faced many dangerous foes in his day. From the sinister killer Croc to the downright psychopathic Joker, the Cape Crusader is always being hunted by something. In what is perhaps his best game yet, Arkham Asylum has Batman diving deep into the prison where he locked away all of his deadliest enemies. Everything about this project was done exceptionally, but it almost made a crazy mistake. Combat is the biggest standout feature in this game because it worked in such a unique, rhythmic style. Tapping a sequence of punches, stuns, and gadgets all flows in perfect tandem that truly makes you feel like Batman. The secret to this smooth pace is due to the fact that at first they wanted this to be a rhythmic action game, sort of like Guitar Hero with more fighting. The idea of just pressing colored buttons to beat people up isn't nearly as hardcore as the final product and probably would have made for a pretty lame time overall. Number 7. Splinter Cell here we have another game that was once part of a totally different genre. Splinter Cell was pitched as a small-scale, real-time strategy game that could show you the harsh reality of modern war. By commanding a squad, you could break into bases, steal information, and hopefully save lives. As soon as they had a playable build, they began to shop it around to get some feedback, but all they heard was very negative. Those who beat their early demo said that it didn't fit together as an interesting world. That's when they sat down and worked out that maybe they should redo the entire project into a third person sneaking title. Everyone on the team put their heads together and set out to make something that played as well as Metal Gear Solid 2, which at the time was the highest selling stealth game. Upon release, it was an instant hit and went on to become one of Ubisoft's most profitable series. Number 6. Borderlands. When you think of Borderlands, what really makes it so intriguing and addictive to play? My guess is that the main appeal is the cool cell shaded art, the over-the-top jokes, and the millions of random guns you can find. It's a combination that meshes together wonderfully with the almost cartoonish levels of violence. What if I told you that the beta version of this game was just a plain, run-of-the-mill space shooter? Amazingly, that really is what we were close to getting. Taking place on the rugged planet of Pandora, 
Pandora, we would be arming ourselves for the ultimate quest for lost treasure in a world literally gone mad. The stark visuals and gritty tone was fascinating, but this was during an era when everything coming out looked just like this. During the ending months of development, they made the daring choice to revamp Borderlands to be silly, bloody, and full of gorgeous color. Obviously, this risk paid off in a massive way, and this franchise is still regarded as one of the best co-op shooters ever made. Number 5. Prey Sometimes, you can come up with a plan that is great, but just too far ahead of current technology. That was certainly the case when design began on Prey back in 1997. The core idea that they were aiming to achieve is to have gameplay revolve around interacting with portals. By turning on power generators and reflecting beams, you could teleport to different parts of the environment, which could lead to some nice extra twists in combat. The problem is, even with the best programmers working on it, nobody could properly get this to function on computers of that time. Eventually, they just had to scrap the code they'd written and started fresh with the launch of the Xbox 360. This new build of the game changed the hero from a character who looked like a bad Torok ripoff into a young man named Tommy. When his village is abducted by UFOs, he'll have to use his head and think fast to blast his way out, all while jumping through quite a few portals. Thankfully, it seems they are able to carve out all the strongest parts of the prototype of Prey and leave behind all the cheesy 90s plot points. Number 4. The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time Link has been raiding dungeons, rescuing princesses, and overall making Hyrule safe for over 30 years now. From his humble 8-bit origins to his grand adventures on the Wii U, this series has taken a lot of different forms. Shigeru Miyamoto is the mastermind at the heart of this revolutionary franchise. His genius molded how each entry would work, but when he sketched out his raw designs for Ocarina of Time, the game was supposed to be much, much stranger. He wanted gameplay to be seen through the first person, sword fighting to be more technical like a samurai film, and the world itself to be more dramatic and important. In order to try and make players feel deeply invested in the struggles of Hyrule, he wanted all actions to have a permanent effect. Broken boxes would stay in rooms, explosions could leave holes, Holes, and some enemies would remain dead forever. On paper, this was a large jump in immersive storytelling over A Link to the Past, but it was determined that this would be far too demanding of a project. In the end, Miyamoto grabbed the chunks of game he personally enjoyed most and used the main assets to craft the flawless journey we have today. Number 3 Fallout 3 Bethesda is often referred to as the kings of open world game design. These talented people can take a simple concept and flesh it out into a 100 hour long epic story. Seriously, just look at Fallout 3. This may appear to be a basic FPS, but in fact hides surprisingly diverse RPG mechanics that fans are still talking about. Some seem to forget that Fallout wasn't always a Bethesda property. It was actually invented by a small company called Black Isle Studios. This team made several complex, dark, and funny titles in the series back in the first days of PC gaming. While they weren't exactly making billions, the franchise managed to keep Black Isle in business, so they focused on ways to improve it. In 2002, they started building a project that they called Van Buren, a codename for what was to become Fallout 3. As you can tell just by glancing at it, this was 100% different than what Bethesda would release five years later. The plot was to center on a prisoner breaking out of jail and exploring the wastelands in a desperate mix of pure survival and hunger for power. I like the general vibe behind this, but I'm rather glad that Black Isle Studios gave up the rights, paving the way for this first-person masterpiece. Number 2. Doom 4 by far, the biggest surprise hit of 2016 so far has been the extremely awesome Doom. In the modern age, the word reboot really annoys gamers. Just the thought of taking an established series and resetting it in an effort to make a load of cash feels lazy and greedy, but id managed to show us how to do it right. This is a game that's all about action, run fast and shoot faster are the only rules for staying alive in the depths of hell. 
It was a style that brought old school doom to a new era perfectly, but things weren't always this great. Originally, the developers were heavily targeting a gritty, realistic vision for Doom 4. Things would take place on Earth shortly after a mysterious tower appeared on the planet, unleashing millions of demons. We would be playing as a team of soldiers assigned the impossible mission of finding the portal to hell, closing it, and hopefully getting rid of Satan's army in the process. No longer would this be a series full of goofy, gory moments. They wanted to pitch it more of as a surreal version of Call of Duty. I'm sure this sounds insane, but the leaked design documents really show that they wanted this to be a slower, squad-based shooter with lots of dull environments and monsters. Suddenly, they realized that this project was so bad it could honestly kill Doom forever, so they deleted the whole thing and started over. I'm sure that that was a very tough call, but I'm really thankful that they did it. Number 1. Grand Theft Auto Normally, a glitch isn't a good thing. One major error in your game could completely ruin the fun for players and cause it to be a huge flop. What if I told you that Grand Theft Auto never would have grown to being one of the best-selling series of all time if it wasn't for a terrible programming problem? During the first stages of design, GTA was a small project called Race and Chase. This would be a simple game that lets you either be the cops or the criminals and drive around town doing jobs for points. Everyone who tested this early version said it was absolutely horrible. It lacked any sort of flair or flavor, something to make it stand out and enjoyable. Everything was just so safe. That's when employees at the office discovered a glitch. If you tapped a police car just right, it would freak out and try and kill you. Cops would ram your vehicle over and over again, trying to shove you off the road or into walls. The playtesters loved this and stopped wanting to do missions at all, instead just spending hours wreaking havoc. Rockstar knew that they'd accidentally stumbled on something big and redesigned the game to be less about accomplishing goals and more about just wandering the city and making your own story. This went from a boring, forgettable driving title to one of the best franchises ever made, and for that reason, I am awarding the original Grand Theft Auto as my pick as the game that almost ended up completely terrible. Did your favorite rough project not make the list? Got an idea for a future top 10? Leave it in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, share with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. But do me the biggest favor of all and keep dreaming. Now if you excuse me, I'm going to go read a little bit of the Resident Evil comics. This is something I've just been researching lately and you know what? They're pretty good. In fact, I'd say the art is downright phenomenal. So if you see this for cheap, Seriously, pick it up. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, maybe check out my last video. Please subscribe, and if you want, share this somewhere with your friends.